Exactly 44 days ago, I watched hundreds of kids stream into City Hall Plaza. I had just talked to a reporter from NPR about what was happening there that day, but I could hardly believe it myself. What had led me to that moment, to me speaking to the crowd at the climate strike? Only months before, I thought I was too small to make a difference. Let me back up to that time. I want to go to Cornell University for graduate school to study conservation ornithology, to become a scientist who researches the impact of a changing environment on birds. The reason why a 13-year-old kid even cares about that is because, in my free time, I go birdwatching, though us bird nerds prefer the term birding. I love birds and animals of all sorts. As I endlessly Googled migration, population numbers, and more, I learned about how human-caused climate change affects the creatures I have such a passion for. And in seventh grade, as I learned more about this climate crisis, it dawned on me that it affects much more than just wildlife. It is an indigenous, economic, racial issue, and most frightening of all, it imperils my future. I felt helpless. Most other kids were stressed about the amount of math homework they had or upcoming sports games, not climate change. I knew or I thought I knew what was happening to our planet, and it scared me right to my core. I didn't believe there was anything I could do about these big, large-scale disasters that the adults couldn't. But while I was longing to do something, some had done so already. One girl sat alone in Sweden. She sat with a sign reading, School Strike for Climate in her language. When asked what she was doing, she would answer, why study or go to school for a future that might not even exist? Before long, she was inspiring other students to take action as well. Kids went on strike in Australia and Europe, and ideas were circulating a movement had been born. Pretty soon, all the strikers across the world came up with a plan. The goal was to have thousands of youth go on strike globally on March 15, 2019. That is when the United States became involved. I had been learning about the strikers and they amazed me. They simply took matters into their own hands and just walked right out of school. With the encouragement of a teacher, I reached out to U.S. Youth Climate Strikes, the group leading the charge for March 15th in America. They had this map on their website with all the states that were participating in the global strike. Maine was missing. How could we get on the map? So I called them and asked the question, what could I do? I didn't know that those calls were for those interested in being leaders. 
I didn't realize that the phone call was an interview. <laughs> I didn't think I was about to become the main state lead for the global strike. <laughs> That was February 27th, 2019. So I had less than a month to prepare. It's raining the morning of the strike. I planned a rally in Portland with 350 Maine and other youth. I'm nervous and jittery. I check my phone to make sure there are no last-minute disasters. What I see instead lifts my heart. 14,000 youth had gone on strike in Germany. Their actions had already happened in a different time zone. And when our rally commences, I see those fantastic numbers echo here. We were expecting maybe 300 students. Over 800 were packed into the plaza. A month of organizing, emailing, and networking had amounted in that rally. And in an hour, it was over. I was ready to take a break for the summer. I had been working on building the main strikes team so I would have more support for the next action. I planned to get outside as much as I could. I wanted to draw those birds I loved, to find wild blueberry patches, to splash in the cold ocean. But as soon as I relaxed into those hazy July days, the next global climate strike was announced. September 20th. It was meant to be bigger, bolder, and more impactful than March 15th. It was to be the first strike to include adults. That is when I realized I probably couldn't just take a break. So with the new team, one strike in Maine went to four. Portland, Farmington, Bangor, and Bar Harbor. And the spotlight went from Europe's actions to the US. The American organizers now had the pressure to bring out the numbers, the crowds. And we sure did. By comparison, on the first ever global climate strike, March 15th, 1.6 million youth were out on the streets. On September 20th, 4 million. Here, we had 1,000 striking on March 15th. On September 20th, our numbers swelled to 3,000. The 20th was the largest climate mobilization in history, and we were a part of it. What has happened across the world has been echoed right here. In numbers, and it affects. Political leaders are now promising to act upon the climate crisis, spurred by the chance of the strikers. In Maine, we now have youth representatives on the new Climate Council, a demand from March 15th. And South Portland has declared climate emergency a demand from September 20th. One thing to be made clear, the September 20th strikes are not the end. 
Just like March 15th was not the end. Indeed, September was a catalyst. We are now seeing our numbers growing, politicians acknowledging the issue, and new dedication worldwide. And it's true. I am tired. A lot of work has been put into these efforts, and sometimes it all feels like too much. I don't even know where I'm going to high school next year. I've been too busy. <laughs> What makes it all worth it is seeing those thousands of people gather together in our city. When I'm overwhelmed or exhausted, I think back to the realization I had a year ago, during March 15th, seeing my first strike fall together. The youth climate movement is one of the most influential of our time, and in our state, we are making it happen. Thank you.